Well, welcome back to a new episode, and today we are finally, once again, working on the Triumph Roadster. Um, for reasons of the weather, namely the torrential rain which has plagued the state of New South Wales here in Australia for the past six months or so, uh, we have been unable to get to the car because the road has been washed away. Uh, so, in the meantime, I have been busy. The last time I came, I removed the old petrol line, which was completely and utterly blocked, and then had a new one made up. So you'll be seeing how I removed the old one and what exactly was wrong with it, and then we can put the new one on and see how that goes. We'll also be fitting the newly refurbished fuel tank and putting on the new oil filters I've acquired from the UK. So without further ado, let's get going. Well, I'm now back under the car and once again looking at the petrol line because, as you will have seen, we have been as yet unable to get it unblocked. So I'm actually going to start trying to remove it from the car completely. I've undone the first clip, which is further over there, and the front is now loose. So I will just work my way back along the car and lever each clip free. That was really easy. And leave the petrol line out of each little clip. So I'm now back by the rear suspension. This is the shock absorber here. And this clip here is slightly different in that it's not clipped to the chassis. It's actually held on by a nut and bolt, which also holds the bracket for the exhaust, which is this thing here. So I'm gonna try and remove that and hopefully it will free up enough room to wiggle the petrol line out of its little clip. So I've now managed to get the little clip off and the nut, and that has freed up the petrol line slightly more. So now I'm going to have to try and work out how to put it back on. There we are, I've loosely put the clip back on because I was worried I'd lose it if I didn't put it back on now. On to the next one. This is the last clip in which the line is held in place. So I will try lifting it out. And of course the last one is much more difficult to remove. Now, getting it out of the car is another matter. So I've almost got the petrol line out now. Here it is. I was lowering it as I went along and it is now completely loose all the way along. I just have to get it past the rear suspension, which is all the way down there, because that's where it goes up and over the chassis rather than running along underneath it. So here is the rear end and it is gradually getting closer to coming out. Just need to keep adjusting it. And I don't know how I'm going to get it past the suspension here though, so I may have to come up with something a bit more ingenious. After much more tugging and wiggling of the end, I've managed to get the tank end of the line up to where the exhaust silencer is here. So hopefully it shouldn't require too much more to get it completely out of the car. Ah, finally. Here is the petrol line completely removed from the car. As you can see, I've tried my best to preserve the shape, but unfortunately it has now developed a small hole. But that hole has also allowed me to locate the blockage, which is definitely in this area. The tank goes on this end, and if I blow through there, there's nothing coming through, it's completely blocked. Whereas if I blow through the other end, it's somewhat less blocked, but it still doesn't have a lot of flow through it. So there's probably rust elsewhere in the line as well. So I think it's probably a good idea if I have a new one made up. I'll have to investigate what materials will be best because this one is steel, but of course that rusts and copper may be better, but that may transfer more heat from the exhaust. So I don't know how that would affect the evaporation of the petrol in the line. Now, 
I thought I'd just show you the new fuel line that we've had made up since the old one was removed now a few months ago. So we've had the new one made in stainless steel. I had it done at a brake place. It's the same diameter as the old one and it's almost the same including the original little fittings and new olives. Um, the fittings are the same as the old ones, in fact we just took them off the old pipe and the new pipe has been bent to the same shape as the old one except here where we couldn't get it out the chassis and it snapped off I've had them pop on this little joiner so I can just unscrew it once we've got most of it in and then pop this little fuel tank end on to secure it in place. So I think that one's ready to go in the car now. Now before I fit the new petrol line I want to make sure a that it fits and b that um, the little olive crimps down onto the line before I put it in the car. So I'm going to try and because of course the olive is loose so I'm going to screw it in first and hopefully get it to crimp down and sit nice and tightly on the line itself. There we are, very good. Still moves a bit, so hopefully when I tighten it in next time, it'll be nice and tight, but it's certainly tight enough now that I'm not worried about it falling off when I need to put it on. So I'll do that for the other end as well. Well, I'm now under the car with the new petrol line, as you can see, and the car is still up on the axle stands. So I'm going to try and feed the petrol line in along the chassis past the exhaust towards the back um, and it's of course got these little clips I won't cover this too much because of course we filmed it coming out and it's not that exciting to see it going back in the same way but that's just what I'll be doing now. The new petrol line is just about fitted you can see it up there I just need to put it into its clips so it tucks under the chassis here and I actually did have to loosen this exhaust mounting just to squeeze it past. But it now runs all the way along over the suspension there and under the rear axle. So that should hopefully be enough for me to just screw down the clips that hold it in place. Then we can finish that bit off. So the next job should be a relatively simple one, just to change the oil filter. This here, right down the bottom of the engine, is the oil filter. It has this large nut on the top, which unscrews and releases the can, which houses the felt oil filter underneath. Um, this one is the Tech Element OF555, uh, for which I had great difficulty finding the correct filter element. Eventually I did get one from the Triumph Roadster Club all the way from the UK but I was rather hoping to find one locally which was not possible unfortunately. I already washed out the old one and put it back in just in case I couldn't get a new one in time for us to start up the engine but I've got this new one now and so I will take out the old one and pop the new one in. So now underneath you can see the oil filter housing next to the sump and we should be able to just unscrew the filter. Ordinarily this would have oil in it of course because the engine would pump oil into it but I've washed it out since we changed the oil so it will be nice and clean for me and there you are you can see the long thread which runs through and here is the filter itself. So exchanging the old for the new is simply a matter of removing the old one. This one could quite easily be the original one for the car from 1947. It certainly looks 
old enough, but I, I did clean this out. It looked even blacker before I cleaned it. Um, and I've washed out the inside of here as well. I've got new seal for this canister. There's this, under this plate is actually a spring, uh, which one must be careful not to lose when changing the filter. So here's the new one. It's beautifully white and clean. So I can put that in like that. And I can examine the seals we have. Yes, so that's the seal for the bowl for the canister. And that'll go on like that. So let's put it back in. Actually, before I put it back on, I'll just pop a little bit of engine oil in so that the level doesn't go down when we start the car. I don't want to do it. Sorry, I should also have mentioned that I removed the rubber remains of the old gasket and the new one goes on something like that. I'll put it into the housing first so that it doesn't crumple up when I screw the canister on. So I've now managed to put the canister back on. So that's the oil filter changed and the car one step closer to running. Now with the petrol line completely in, it's time to think about putting the refurbished tank back in. Uh, there are two main things to worry about with this. Firstly, I need to make sure that the wires for the tank sender are on top of the tank when we bolt it in, because otherwise, of course, I won't be able to get to them when I go to reconnect them to get the sender to work. The other thing is, of course, the filler neck, which makes it rather more difficult, and you have to, will have to try and tuck the tank up inside the car um, to get the filler neck aligned before you can then sit the rest of the tank in the bay where it's supposed to go. So I'll just inspect the area now and I think we'll have to give it a bit of a brush down first to try and make it easier to get the whole thing in. Right, so here is the filler neck and here is my new filler neck hose. And that should just go on here like that. I did test it before I cut it to size and put the clips on, so it should go on somehow. So I think I'll try and rest the tank on the wheel, which is down here, and gradually lift it into place and make sure everything that needs to be in a special place is in its correct spot, like the wires for the tank sender and of course the filler neck um, are correctly positioned before we try and lift it into its rightful spot and put the straps over. So there's the tank almost back in position. I just need to secure down the um, retaining straps. But first, I'm going to actually cut off some new strips of rubber which run along between the retaining straps and the tank and stop the straps chafing the tank or making a hole in it in some other way. So I'll cut the, some bits off and I'll put them underneath and then bolt on the straps. So that is now the tank fully in place with the filler neck, the straps along the bottom, 
all tightened up as well as the tank sender on the top. I put the wires back on and covered them up in the boot. So all that's left for me to do now is fit my final piece of the fuel line and connect it to the tank. So this end here with the little knurled end goes on there and then the other end with the olive goes straight back into the tank. Um, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult. Right, so I did eventually get the petrol line completely in. It took a while though because the new petrol line was slightly longer and didn't fit brilliantly. It was, considering we had it made up though, it's pretty good. And um, I just had to bend it slightly and wiggle the tank to get it in. So it got there eventually, but now I think it's time for a nice cup of tea. So, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video of me working on the Triumph Roadster. Hopefully next time we'll be able to fulfil the long-awaited video of will it start for the first time in more than 40 years. We shall see, but until then, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, and ta-ta for now. <laughs>